Hi everyone and welcome to episode four of the English Link podcast with me, Elle. And today I'm joined by Link team member Shelby. Hi Shelby. Hi Elle. Hi. So to call out the elephant in the room, <laughs> you changed your name. I did, yes. Um, I'm going to start going by my middle name, Elizabeth or L for short. So yeah, anyone who's been watching, if, please don't be confused uh, if I suddenly start using a different name. But yeah, it's 2020. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why <laughs> not? It's the perfect time. Topsy turvy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the perfect time for it. I love, um, I love it. I think people had a hard time pronouncing um, Jareen anyway. So yes. maybe it'll be a little bit easier for some of us. I think so. Yeah. Jareen was the, uh, <laughs> the pronunciation. It's a Canadian thing, I think. And it's a weird name anyway, so. But L is easier, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, we like you, whatever your name is. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, um, so Shelby, I thought it would be interesting to talk with you about your experiences in Ecuador and Chile today because I don't know anything about them. I knew I know that you speak Spanish amazingly well. And, um, oh, thank you. So, I mean, I don't speak Spanish myself to know, but listening to you <laughs> sounds amazing. <laughs> you, ran the, world. <laughs> yeah, you ran the um, uh, live stream with Steve, the Spanish live stream. Very cool. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, tell us about it. So, what, why? It was Ecuador first, right? And then Chile. You mm -hmm. lived in both. Okay. Yes. So, so why Ecuador? Yeah, good question. Um, it comes up a lot. I um, had a goal ever since I was in high school, probably around ages 16, 17, to live in South America one day. And, you know, after graduating, I thought um, it would be really cool to live in a big city too, because I'm from Portland, Oregon, which has become more well known since I was born but um, it's still a small city. It's not really what you think of as like city living. Um, so I wanted to live in a big city at some point in my life. And um, a few years ago, I saw this window of opportunity open up where I could start working remotely. And so I thought like, ooh, like I could now go live in South America as I've always wanted to do. And um, I thought, why not kind of combine the two goals? Like, I'll go live in a big city in South America. So um, South America is a huge place. I didn't know at all where I wanted to go. So I kind of established what the most important aspects of the location would be for me. And I put them in a spreadsheet and I just started researching uh, all those biggest cities and uh, in South America and trying to optimize uh, for those factors. So they were more or less, um, you know, quality of life, mm -hmm. cost of living, access to nature and hiking, um, you know, good place to work remotely. So, you know, like easy internet access and stuff like that. Um, and relative safety too, because um, mm -hmm. I was, you know, uh, 23 and going to move to South America by myself. So, mm -hmm. you know, mom wants to make sure that's oh, that as well research and it's going to be safe. So mm -hmm. anyway, um, Quito, Ecuador, the capital of Ecuador, um, came out mostly on top and pretty much all of those aspects. So I decided mm -hmm. to move to Quito, which Quito. it didn't turn out to be as safe as, oh. Oh, no. <laughs> as like I thought it was going to be, but I, I had a really great community, um, I joined like an expats in Quito Facebook group, which was mm -hmm. very active, very well, you know, uh, moderated, I would say. Um, and you know, there was a, uh, I got a lot of great, um, resources and advice and insights, um, about like what to do and which areas to avoid and stuff like that. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, I was fine the whole time that I was there, but, um, it was not the best quality of life only due mm. to the higher crime rate. Oh, okay. um, and so like, it was not advisable to basically walk on the street after sunset and wow. the sun sets at 6 PM every day in Ecuador. Cause it's on the equator. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, okay. That's where it gets its name actually. Fun fact. Yeah. So yeah, but aside from that, like it was 
absolutely there in all of the other areas. I mean, Quito is situated between um, two giant rows of um, just staggering mountains. Mm -hmm. So it's only like a couple kilometers wide and 28 kilometers long. So no matter where you are in the city, uh, you look to your left, you look to your right, and you're seeing these gorgeous lush green mountains. Um, and, you know, at night, they're just all lit up with all the different um, lights from mm -hmm. restaurants and, and houses on them. So it's truly beautiful and amazing hiking, of course. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. I guess so with those mountains. And how how long were you in Ecuador? In Quito, right? Yeah. I was only there for three months. Oh, okay. Wow. And that was, and you left because of the safety issue, mainly. Um, well, th that was why I was open to pivot and, and mm -hmm. go someplace else afterwards. I wasn't ready to go home, mm -hmm. um, but it was that an, uh, an opportunity opened up at the company I was working at, um, which is a vacation rental management platform. Okay. And um, it's an international company. Um, we have, or the company had a few offices in Chile, one mm -hmm. in Santiago, and then one at the coast at Valparaiso. Um, and so, yeah, it was a great, um, leadership opportunity opened up down in Santiago. And so my manager reached out and said, Hey, are you like open to, to going to Chile? And I said, yeah, you know, sign me up for that. <laughs> great. And did you know Spanish then before? Cause I know it's a big part of high school in, in the States, generally speaking Spanish class. Did you know any Spanish before you moved? Yeah. Um, so I took Spanish in high school and I was actually lucky enough to start in eighth grade, but I was still oh, in middle okay. school. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Spanish is definitely a, um, it's like the main language that people will learn, I would say, you know, learn in quotes mm -hmm. because most people don't get the opportunity to really learn it for whatever reason. Usually it's that, um, you know, I find that there are not the best like teachers, mm -hmm. um, in, uh, all around and of course students also find that it's challenging and because it's hard they um they don't like it and they they tend to give up so mm -hmm. I just was really into it and I was always really fortunate to get super solid teachers um for yes. all five years so from oh, eighth grade okay. through my senior year in high school I studied it really enjoyed it um and I had done an immersion program in Costa Rica for a few weeks mm -hmm. one summer and that really helped as well. So I had gained like um, conversational fluency by the time I graduated high school. Oh, that's great. And kind of unusual, I feel like. Did, did any of your friends do the same? Were you in a, was everyone speaking Spanish or French or whatever? Or? No. But, yeah. N no, I don't think any of like my mm. friends that I was friends with outside of school um, like developed fluency or anything close mm. to it. I was actually mm -hmm. always helping them um, with their Spanish homework. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, a friend to you know, I, I, uh, oh yeah, but you know, I, I was charging, of course. <laughs> nice, <laughs> good. Um, <laughs> but no, I had um, friends that I met through Spanish class, of course. So like there was the, the group of us that were prevailing, <laughs> seen okay. as nerds, I'm sure. <laughs> that was that was the only thing I was good at, though. I wasn't, like, good at other classes. <laughs> I'm sure that's not true, but it's a very cool <laughs> oh, thing it to be good at. It's, uh, it's very cool. It's amazing, actually, yeah. I don't know anyone who, just from taking classes in high school, came out conversational. Like, we study Welsh at school, where I'm from, in Wales, and French, yeah. and no one I know came out speaking Welsh or French, so... Oh, really? And yeah. how, how, well, thank you. Um, I mean, it was like, I had great teachers. I don't think mm. if I hadn't had those teachers, I would have, um, succeeded. Mm. Um, but how many years of Welsh and French do you take in school in Wales? Uh, Welsh, I mean, we're taught Welsh from primary school or elementary school, but just oh, okay. bits and pieces, you know, nothing really, um, intense. And then in high school, uh, from the beginning of high school, which is age 11 in the UK. Uh, but, uh, yeah, some teachers are not very inspiring or just good teachers in general. <laughs> I definitely didn't yeah. have good Welsh <laughs> teachers. It was a bit of a, a mess, honestly, our uh, Welsh ed education in my high school. And oh, French, no. just a couple of years, and I hated it. And now I'm learning French <laughs> because I'm doing it in a way that I enjoy not those teachers weren't weren't very nice either. <laughs> so right. you're so, so right. I mean, it really, really does. I mean, you can have a passion for something, of course, but it really 
helps when you have an inspiring and motivating and, and friendly teacher. So absolutely yeah, for sure. Um, so then three months in Ecuador, then you moved to Santiago in Chile. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And right. so tell me about that. Chile. Chile, right? Uh, Not Chile. <laughs> yeah, Chile. <laughs> Chile. 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 Okay. Um, there's a, there'd be a lot um, to cover. Like my experience there was really, um, you know, it was overshadowed by the work that I was doing there because it was a really big job. Um, and I mean, it, it was my first time working in leadership in like a big, a semi big company. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, it was a mess, honestly, <laughs> in, oh, in the beginning. Yeah. Um, I, because it was, exacerbated by the fact that I had just moved to a new country too. Mm -hmm. So like moving to a new country by yourself is a pretty challenging endeavor. And then, you know, taking on, um, a really autonomous leadership role, um, following previously kind of negligent leadership. So I was like cleaning up a really big mess. True. Um, and on top of that, um, you know, while I had gained that conversational fluency in high school, that had been, I don't know, um, six years prior and, um, it was Mexican Spanish and like, mm -hmm. yes, it's the same language spoken throughout most of South America. Um, you know, with the exception of, um, Brazil and, um, Gu uh, Guyana and mm -hmm. some of those other countries on the other side of Brazil. Um, but for the most part, I mean, it's, it's Castilian Spanish. However, in Chile, I mean, anyone who has spoken to a Chilean and is, is already Spanish speaking knows it's a very distinct dialect. Oh. Um, and there are, you know, different dialects within Chile too, but, um, they speak incredibly fast. Um, they, they, um, like cut syllables out of words. Um, they also aspirate their S's. So instead of saying mas, they're going to say ma. And so you don't like hear that, oh. that sound that you're used to hearing. And they also have like over a thousand words that are only used in Chile, but it's interesting because the slang is just like pervasive, like everyone in every different, um, you know, um, social class and different generation are using these slang words and they're so common. Um, like the, the one that like, when I finally had that, like, oh, we're not in Kansas anymore, Toto <laughs> moment, um, was like a few weeks in, I had been looking for Mexican food because I as an American, I eat a lot of Mexican food mm -hmm. and I couldn't find any. And one day I was in a, a taxi or an Uber and the driver told me, hay mucho taco en la calle, um, which I understood as there's a lot of tacos in the street. So um, I said, tacos where? Like street tacos? And then he goes, oh no, sorry, sorry. That's our slang. Taco is how we say traffic in Chile. <laughs> And like, there's no tacos. And I'm like, that's <laughs> like a double bummer. Right How now. disappointing. <laughs> it wow. was a, a big disappointment. I mean, uh, Mexico is very far away from Chile. If anyone needs to look at a map, um, if they think they're anywhere <laughs> close to each other. So, you know, it, that was a lot of, it was a lot of fumbling in the beginning. And mm -hmm. actually like for the first eight months or so, I would say I had a really hard time holding a, an extensive conversation with any Chilean. Mm -hmm. um, but I met some great friends and they really helped me, um, you know, stay sane <laughs> and, you know, and acclimate too. Like I um, felt safe speaking to them in Spanish um, mm -hmm. because of course it's, it can be really like demoralizing to just not know the right word and stumble and then people think you're stupid Mm. And you know that you're not stupid, but they have no way of knowing that because right. you can't articulate yourself. So, yeah. you know, humbling experience for sure. Yeah. And in terms of uh, safety, then, you felt safer in Santiago than you did in, in Quito? Yeah, much safer. Um, okay. You know, safe safety is always relative. Um, but yeah, I would say Santiago mm. was much safer. And you could, you know, walk on the street after it gets dark. Um you know, of course, always have your wits about you, but, mm -hmm. um, the Metro, um, is a great system of transportation and I could easily, you know, get off and walk several blocks and great. felt totally safe. Great. So then in terms of culture shock, so the language, I guess 
was a bit shocking for you to, to realize that you had to, I guess, not learn a whole new language, but, you know, learn a lot of slang and the different ways of speaking. Was there anything else that you can think of that jumps out as surprising or took some getting used to in Chile? Oh, yeah, a lot. Yes, yeah. it's, it's interesting because um, I've been to like some kind of obscure countries um, and Chile out of any place I've been is the most similar to the U.S. in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Like even Santiago, it looks kind of like Los Angeles. Okay. Um, it feels kind of like New York when you're walking down the street because there's just like so many people and it's like a metropolis. Um, and it's developed um, and you know, every place takes credit cards. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas in Quito, in Ecuador, like you, not every place is going to take credit cards. And in fact, like they are going to really want you to have like exact change because they don't always have change. Wow. Um, okay. So small things like that, that make you feel like, oh, I'm really in a different place right now. Mm -hmm. You didn't have that in Chile, but out of any place I've ever been, I had the strongest culture shock in Chile. Mm -hmm. You know, it could have been because I was also working there. And so I mm -hmm. felt like culture shock from um the way my coworkers interacted with me but um like the big thing was the food um they eat a pretty um i would say like a not incredibly variable diet and again coming from the states and also coming from portland oregon um if anyone's like read a blog about portland or visited mm -hmm. you probably know it's like a big food city mm -hmm. and there's just you just get like a wide range of foods. So, you know, you, you're going to have the Mexican food, of course, um, a lot of different foods from Asia, mm. um, you know, um, Thai food and, um, you know, lots of sushi and different um, Japanese foods, Korean, Chinese food. Mm. I mean, there's just so much. Yeah. Um, you got very little of that in, in Santiago and in, in Chile, and they mostly just eat like the, the core elements of the diet are um, different kinds of meat, um, like ham and, and stuff like that. Um, cheese and also not like sharp cheese, but more like just kind of more bland cheese, I would say. Okay. And, um, bread, like really good bread. I learned <laughs> that Chile is number two in the world for bread per capita. And <laughs> right after Germany, yeah, okay, I was trying make, to think. Which they make some yeah, I met some, I met some <laughs> Germans in Chile who were like, "Yeah, like good breads here, but not like at home." <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's amazing and delicious food. They also make they grow some excellent um, avocados there. Mm, okay. But um, I was vegan and gluten free when I arrived, so wow. oh, <laughs> it no. made it really hard to adapt. And I mean, I I I changed my diet. Um, but I just found it hard to find, you know, good vegan options and mm. like spicy food too. Um, I find that of course I'm generalizing, there are certainly people who are exceptions, but mm -hmm. the typical Chilean diet is like, you eat a lot of, um, rice, meat. Um, if you eat cheese, you eat like really bland, almost like flavorless cheese, I would say. And you mm. don't like spicy foods. Um, even like an onion, it might be considered really spicy. Wow. And I feel like I'm throwing a lot of shade, but like I, I talk to my friends in Chile about this all the time. Like you guys like need to <laughs> expand your horizons when it comes to cuisine. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just, I like really spicy food. So mm -hmm. I too. struggled yeah. with that. <laughs> that's so sad. Were you gluten-free for health reasons or just, just yeah. doing it? Oh, so you oh have, you, sorry. You no, no, no. Oh, okay. Not because like, I am I have celiac oh, okay. or I'm gluten intolerant, but for health reasons and that I found, I find that I like, um, think better and have better mm -hmm. energy when mm -hmm. I stay away from gluten. I mean, I'm, I'm not strictly gluten free. I just kind of like, I try to avoid it and I, I don't okay. make it like a main element of my diet. Okay. So you did try some of the bread? Or... Oh yeah. Okay, good. That's I good. ate a lot of the bread. Oh good. <laughs> That's good. I was going to say, <laughs> I love bread. I can, you can't beat like really good bread and really full fat creamy butter it's just oh simple. yeah simple is good but so okay that was gonna make me you really sad if you couldn't have any of that bread <laughs> oh no it's great like i i feel bad you know for anyone who who can't actually indulge and, and try it because it's 
It's amazing. They're the main bread um, that you're going to have to try if you ever go to Chile is meriqueta. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's sold everywhere. It's like freshly baked every day. Like even mm -hmm. at the grocery stores, they sell the freshly baked stuff. And you walk by like any cafe and it's just the smell is wafting out. And you're like, I need that right now. Best, best smell ever baking bread. So good. Okay. So good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you were... Uh, working in an office then in Santiago or you were working yeah. remotely oh okay so you were able to interact with other Ch Chileans or was it an office of mm -hmm. people from all over the world or a bit of both uh, you know it was uh, a lot of Chileans but yeah um, we had people from all over the world um, I was really really fortunate um, the the team that I um, had the pleasure of managing there um, was the customer experience department and they were especially like a melting pot. We had a lot of Brazilians on that team, um, a girl from Venezuela, um, a, a girl from France. And I mean, we actually, we expanded the team and ended up bringing more and more immigrants on board. Um, but yeah, a lot of Chileans and then Brazilians, I would say would be the next uh, largest population we had. And is it, so Brazilians then they're speaking Spanish because it's not as, it's not they're not super interchangeable right like you don't just know spanish if you speak portuguese and vice versa or sure yeah i mean you don't no i mean you you do have to learn the languages individually mm. but they're they are so similar and mm. i mean i can i can understand um like i can read a decent amount of um oh, wow. portuguese mm -hmm. um and over time as i listen to the brazilians like speaking with each other and I got to know like their personalities and I was mm -hmm. reading the context of the situation. Like I was starting to understand a small amount of what they said. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, they, ha they had to learn the languages separately. And um, yeah. the team that I managed, they um, were all trilingual. So they all had to yeah. speak um, at least English and Spanish and another language just for the mm -hmm. requirements of that role. Um, and some of them spoke four languages. I mean, they're super impressive. <laughs> wow. So jealous of that. <laughs> so yeah, um, it was. I felt very <laughs> mediocre. <laughs> well, yeah, just the two <laughs> languages. What an idiot! <laughs> and you're on your way to three now because you're learning French. How's that going? Yeah, working on it. Oh, yeah. it's it's a lot of fun. Um, I mean, I found Link at the beginning of this year, and I I, I read a testimonial about it, and I was like, oh my gosh, like I have to to try this and I got into it and was starting with the mini stories and I found that I was actually like retaining a lot of what I was reading which was so weird um and <laughs> surprising yeah <laughs> right. yeah it's just it's not intuitive compared to how I've learned in the past because mm -hmm. um, I've used Duolingo before um and of course I've had the classes mm -hmm. but this was like a full-on kind of immersive experience um and then I when I when I got into um, you know learning through music and importing music videos to learn that way, it became I mean it went from like you know here to like off off the charts <laughs> in terms of fun and I actually crave it you know like at the oh, end nice. of the night even if I'm tired and like I didn't get to it that day I'm like I want to actually um, study on on Link right now so excellent I've never had an experience like that before. That's great. That's a great place. It shouldn't be a chore, you know, we're taught, well, maybe not you because you enjoyed studying Spanish in school, but for a lot of people, you know, oh, studying is a chore. Even if you enjoy the subject sometimes, you know, you'd like, oh, yeah, I've got to get through Definitely. this content. But yeah, when it doesn't feel like, like a chore, like a task you have to get through in the day, it's, uh, it's a whole different thing, you know, you go at your own pace and do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. No one's going to be testing you at the end of it. It's just for you. So yeah, it's cool. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. So how long were you in Chile? Chile. Uh, perfect. I was there for 14 months. Oh, nice. Okay. And what, uh, what would you say you miss the most about the place, the country? Um, at this point, I would say what I miss the most are all the friendships that I made there. Um, people through work, um, as well as some people outside of work too. Mm -hmm. Um, I have some of my best friends still down there 
and the, you know, the people that I worked with, especially some of them um, who I became really close with and um, really mentored them and got to see like them, you know, get promoted and grow a lot through the company. Nice. It's, um, it's hard to not work with them anymore. Um, you know, Link stole my heart. I said, I have to go work at this other company now. <laughs> um, but also, you know, just on a friendship level, um, I miss hanging out with them. But of course, mm -hmm. we've got you know, WhatsApp and uh, right. can stay in touch that way. And it's a blessing to be able to maintain friendships from mm -hmm. long distance, you know. Do you think any plans, I mean, when the world goes back to normal, whatever that is, any plans to uh, visit in the future? Yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, I went back, um, like I moved home in the beginning of, like in the first quarter of 2019, Mm -hmm. um, and then I went back actually in January of this year. Uh, okay. So that was still through work, but I mm -hmm. got to see my friends a lot down there too. So um, I would like to be able to visit for sure. And I would love like to go other places as well. And so a lot of the friends that I have are big travelers as well. So I said, let's mm -hmm. meet someplace else next time. Oh yeah, that's a really good idea. That's good. Um, and do you have any advice I always like to ask at the end? Um, cause I've never, I've never been to South America or Central America actually. So, and I'd like to, it just, I just, you know, I grew up in the UK, made it's it yet. really, really far, but now I'm closer. So makes sense. So, yeah. Um, I will definitely one day. And <laughs> what advice do you have for, I know it's a huge place and you were in, um, Ecuador and, uh, Chile, but uh, do you have any advice for people thinking of visiting or even going to live in one of those countries? Yeah, um, well, I mean, be pre if you like spicy food, like be prepared that you're not going to find a lot of it. So like bring, like ha have a backup plan, you know, like have a bring, bring those spices with you. Bottle of sriracha <laughs> or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I mean, definitely do your research before you go, just like before you go anywhere. Um, you want to be prepared for, you know, how to pay for things, how to get around. Mm. Like, don't don't expect to be able to, like, go to an ATM and, and make a withdrawal anywhere that you go. Um, and that's general travel advice, of course. Um, yeah. But that little bit of research really goes a long way. And I would say also, like, see if you can find um, Facebook groups um, mm -hmm. or there's so many other different platforms you can go on these days. You could use, like, meetups um and i think it's called like couch surfing like all these different mm -hmm. platforms you can use to kind of network with people um before you get there and, and ask them for advice um but yeah i mean i would just say like you know be open-minded because mm -hmm. the people in south america and the various countries within it um in central america like they um they they have a different culture and there's something there's something unique to experience in every culture that you visit. Mm -hmm. And if you expect them to be just like you, but they speak a different language, um, you know, that's probably not true, but you will find that you have so much more in common than mm -hmm. you perceived before going there. So right. like try to actually get to know the people at the everyday level and sure, like do the touristy stuff if, if you want to, like that's always mm -hmm. fun, but try to actually interact and get to know people um, on the day-to-day -day level because you're going to experience a, a whole different level of that culture and be able to appreciate it a lot more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good advice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Shelby. That was really interesting for me to find out as uh, with us also working not in the same place. It's really nice to get to know a bit more about you as well. So Thank yeah, likewise. Thank on. you. And <laughs> and what about what about you, L? Um, what's one of the, I, I mean, what what's one of the most recent or most favorite countries that you visited? Wow, well, most recent. I haven't been anywhere in a really long time, actually. <laughs> now that I think about it, I haven't even been. I, I'm from Wales in the UK. I haven't been back in a couple of years. So, I think I always have to say Japan, just because I lived there for three years and. Yeah, like like you mentioned with getting to know the people, you know, it, as intimately as, as you can as a foreigner in a, in a country um, was just amazing. The people there are just so wonderful, friendly and warm and just the place is just so steeped in tradition and history and it's 
beautiful and I love it and I miss it <laughs> all the time. I really, really want to go back sometime soon, but I think my son is two and a half now. So I think when he's around, I don't know, at an age, he could really enjoy it. So maybe, maybe like 10, I think is the youngest, you know, before age 10, I think maybe just want to be playing and not going to sightseeing or whatever. So we'll see what kind of kid he is anyway, but yeah, definitely <laughs> yeah. to get back. That's a long way off actually. That's seven and a half yeah. years from now. We'll see if I know. we get there sooner, but yeah. <laughs> you got to fit in some, some other trips before then. For sure. Maybe Portland. not as far. Yeah. Well, I've never been to Portland and Vancouver is so close to Portland. So that's definitely yeah. on my list. So, and Mark, uh, my husband is from Vancouver. I don't know if he's been to Portland either, which is crazy. It's really? Since he grew up in Vancouver, but have you been to Vancouver? Yeah, I oh, okay. visited, but I mean, it was a really short, was that the only time? I think I've only been once. Mm. It was actually for my birthday a few years ago. Oh, okay. um, but, you know, it was like a two to three day trip and there's so much to see there. Mm -hmm. um, but I, my birthday is in July. And so I like just, I had, I mean, it's just beautiful, perfect weather. And That's I went with my best time. friends and uh, we had such a great time. I thought the whole vibe of the city um, was perfect. And I thought I could see myself living there one day. I hear it's kind of similar to the, the vibe in Portland. Is that, would you say? I think I so. I mean, definitely. Like you yeah. have the, the West Coast cities. Mm. I mean, I don't even count LA, but like starting in like San mm. Francisco and then Portland and Seattle, um, are, you mm. know, like the, the trio, the Pacific Northwest trio in the States. But Vancouver, I think is like the best of all of them because mm. it, it it's similar, you know, but it's also... It's in Canada, first of all, which is just a great country. And <laughs> it's um, it's so much more international. Like I was going to say, it feels more international, but it actually is more international. You hear multiple different languages being spoken. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I went to a lot of touristy places, so maybe that was a, a reason for it. Um, mm -hmm. But being able to hear like Cantonese and French, and I heard a lot of Spanish too, mm -hmm. um, and, and English like all the same place you you don't yeah. get so much of that in Portland oh, okay no that is that is accurate for Vancouver for sure it's very multicultural yeah I think it's I think it's fit we're also 50 percent of the country sorry city in North America with the highest um Asian population I think we're around 50 percent mm. in Vancouver too and yeah I'm just thinking of my street so we have like Persian, Chinese, Japanese, like, and there's a whole area in Vancouver, a lot of uh, East Indian. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's really, it's really cool. I do love that about Vancouver for sure. So, yeah. Yeah, well, it's important to get exposed to those other cultures. I think so. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, it's important for sure. And just so f lucky, you know, like to, to have that richness of, um, of culture around is, is nice. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. You will have to come visit because uh, we would love to meet you in person one day. The Those of us who are in the Vancouver office, not all of us, but those of us who are, would love to have you up. Oh, sure. thank you. Likewise. Yeah, yeah as, soon as, uh, <laughs> as soon as your country starts letting us back in, yeah. <laughs> let me know. <laughs> Such a weird time. Uh, there's hope, there's hope so on the horizon. People are being vaccinated now, finally. It's Finally, I mean, it's... It's been amazing. <laughs> took them so long. It's been. I yeah. know. It took them long enough, right? <laughs> I'm ready to start traveling again, guys. Yeah. Let's get oh, this show on. on the road. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I would. I would love to come up and and stay for a longer stay and be able to meet my my awesome coworkers in person that live in Vancouver. Excellent. So well, we'll make it happen. We will. We will. Looking forward to it. Well, thank you so much, Shelby, and um, I will chat to you again at some point for the podcast if that's okay we'll think of some other interesting sure. talk. Great. yeah i would love to it's always great chatting with you l um you. and <laughs> and thanks so much for the questions appreciate oh, it thank you bye <laughs> bye